Hey everyone, I'm Jonathan. I'm just gonna go through the Zold defibrillator and using it uh, in all of the uh, manual modes mm -hmm. and some of the troubleshooting things that I want people to be familiar with, okay? So first we have it, we make sure that it's plugged in or the battery's activated. We have our check mark uh, indicating that it's good for use. Right now, I have it hooked up to the simulator with an arrhythmia, heart rate 160s, 170s, AFib with RVR. So if we need to cardiovert, it's already set to manual defib. We're gonna set it to say uh, 50 joules. So I'm using my energy select button. I'm going to synchronize. So press the sync button. You see the tick marks here in the QRS. It also says sync right here. That's how you know it's on. So I'm gonna charge verbally and visually clear my patient everybody clear right now I'm looking at the patient as I press the button so I shock so we still have AFib with RVR let's escalate the energy go up to 100 joules I'm gonna charge and say I'm assessing it I'm synchronized but I see there's a rhythm change oh that's not a shockable rhythm so I want to disengage it a couple ways you can do it you could either flip this off or, which I think is easier, is just press energy up or down and, it's, and it dis, disengages the charge, right? It mm -hmm. disarms it. Um, so now, dealing with bradycardia, heart rate in the 30s, the patient's unstable, and I wanna start pacing him. It looks like a complete heart block, so I'll switch to pacer. Now, just like our other defibrillators, you need to have both the pads and the EKG leads on. So it's gonna tell you what to do. If you get something like this, that means you need to troubleshoot, right? So reading the screen is pretty important. So it tells me EKG lead is off. I connect it, this is my patient, and uh, I, I hook up the EKG lead, I'm good to go. I'm seeing the rhythm. These are the pacer spikes. It all automatically turns on. So all I need to do is dial in my rate. I wanna pace at a rate of 60, so I'm turning the dial and I'm watching the rate, dropping it down to 60. And then I'm going up on my energy, okay? So I can go pretty quickly until I get capture. I'm watching for capture. Okay, I get capture. Now I wanna find my threshold, right? Where I, the, the lowest amount of energy where I get pacer capture. So I'm gonna go down a little bit, nice and slow, and see when my cure, when my, uh, pacemaker stops capturing okay so right around maybe 40 48 and then so 48 is my threshold to be safe and to ensure I have capture I'm gonna go up 10 so to 58 all right so that's pacing now say I have this rhythm, ventricular tachycardia, patient is pulseless and I need to defibrillate. So I go to manual defib. Um, so now I'm gonna charge. Actually, and I wanna go up in energy. So let's do 150 joules, charge, charge again. I'm gonna verbally and visually clear the patient just like I did with cardioversion. Everyone clear. And I'm looking at the patient as I press the shock button. All right, so. Also, to be clear, let, um, do not use the analyze button. The analyze is for AED. Right, right. So say I use, say one of the dilemmas, if we show up on another ward as part of a code response and they press analyze, and clear. this is what you will see, right? I know in our old defibrillator, it's very clear, the screen changes, but this, it's, it's no not, shock advised. it's going to talk to Perform you. Perform CPR. Right. And so it, it talks to you. The only way that you know it's in analyze mode or AED mode is it's talking to you or it, it actually clear. says analyzing. So a way to disengage that is also pressing the down button on the energy or you can, or- No shock advised. Oh, Perform my bad. CPR. So, Stand clear. So if you're analyzing to disengage analyzing, you just press analyze again. Analysis halted, okay? analysis halted so that's how you disengage it right or you can turn it back off and then turn it back on okay so that's one of the things that i want people to get in the habit of 
is ensure you're not analyzing and put yourself in manual mode. All right, uh, another thing, this, this defibrillator has a filter EKG tracing, which tells you the intrinsic rhythm and filters out the artifact from CPR, right? Um, so the way that you get to it is, let's see if I remember, options, and I go to traces. And if I lead, I push trace two, it's gonna show two leads. If I press trace three, it's gonna show three leads. So let's just do two, which is the default. So filter is the intrinsic rhythm. EKG is, is gonna be um, the rhythm that's received, but you may get artifact from the CPR compressions, okay? Um, another helpful thing to know is if you go to, oops, if you go to traces and you do three traces, you can even add your CPR compressions, which people like to see, even though it's up here. So if you're doing CPR, it'll show up there, okay? Um, another thing to know, doing blood pressures. I want everyone to get in the habit. Our other defibrillator didn't have that capability right here. Every time you press this, you'll get a blood pressure. So say we activate it, pretty simple to turn it off. You just hit that to turn it off. So say I want to do automatic serial blood pressures. Go to parameters, NIBP, and I press auto NIBP and it's gonna go off on the default, which is every five minutes. Say the code team leader or, or uh, team leader wants to change it or, or you feel like you need to change it, you can make it less or more. You can even make it up to two hours, Q2 hour uh, blood pressures. So you would just go to parameters, NIBP, and you go to settings and then auto interval. And then you can increase, look at seven minutes, you can go down to two and a half minutes, whatever you like, okay? Whatever is appropriate. And that's how you set um, the blood pressure settings. Okay, great. All right, so that's, yeah, and that's all, that's all the stuff that I wanted to everyone to get familiar with initially. Okay. Cool. Thanks.